from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. arrived at the country of the Gabrosenes, which is opposite Galilee. Uh, as he stepped out on land, there he met a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes. He lived not in a house, but among the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? <coughs> I beseech thee, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for many a time it had seized him. And he was kept under guard and bound with chains and fetters, but he broke the bonds, was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged Jesus not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they begged Jesus to let them enter them, uh, so he gave them leave. When the demons had come out of the man, they entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was destroyed. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen told them how he had been possessed with demons was healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gadrosenes asked Jesus to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into a boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare all that God has done for you. And he went away <coughs> proclaiming uh, throughout the whole city all that Jesus had done for him. Glory to the Please be seated. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> now and ever, and <clears throat> two ages of ages, amen. <clears throat> this story um, is told in the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John. In one of the gospels, it mentions that there were two men, but obviously uh, the other two gospels don't mention the second man because he was not as crazed uh, an uh, insane man is the one, the particular one that the other two Gospels remember. And uh, the demons in him immediately recognize Jesus as God. Uh, and they react uh, because their belief is that they're allowed to do their dirty work until the second coming. And that, at that point they will be then condemned to the abyss with Satan and never have any power again over mankind. Uh, and so they are saying, you know, what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be messing with us. Uh, but Jesus asked, uh, who are you? Uh, to make personal contact with the demon. And they reply, legion, which meant that it was more than one demon possessing the man. And the man was crazy as a nut. Uh, he couldn't live in town anymore. They tried to bind him with chains and put him under guard, but he broke the chains because he was so powerful in his insanity. <coughs> And so he ended up living in the tombs and scaring the devil out of anybody who came by. And Jesus heals him. And the demons don't want to go in the abyss, and so they said, well, you put us in the herd of swine. So he does. The herd of swine flies off the cliff into the water and drowns. And, of course, the symbolism there is that the Jews who have interbred with pagans living in Decapolis uh, the area of the Gadrosenes, um, aren't keeping the rules of Judaism. 
they are tending pigs, and pigs are considered unclean uh, because they're scavengers. <clears throat> so they're ritually unclean, and legitimate Jews don't hurt them or eat them or do any of that. And so that's the reason why the swine ended up dying anyway, um, because it's a reminder to the people in this area that they shouldn't be tending swine. But the, the, the interesting thing about all of this is the people in the area should be overwhelmingly grateful that this menace that they had to live with is over. The man is healed. He's sitting there clothed and sane, prepared to live a normal life. And instead of focusing in thanksgiving on what God has done, they want Jesus to get out of here because he cost them money in the death of the swine. And so they focus on what their loss is as opposed to what their gain is, which is really great sadness. Now the message for you and I, because the gospel always has a message for you and I, are there things about following Christ that we don't do because we want Jesus to go away and not cost us some things in our daily life that we want to hold on to? I don't know what that is for each one of us individually, but there are probably things that we tell Jesus to go away and leave us alone so that we can hold on to those things in our lives and not have to yield them up in obedience to Christ. And the result is, of course, by making those kind of compromises, we don't continue on the theosis journey and become increasingly restored to the likeness of God in which we are created. And we miss the joy of the gates of heaven opening up while we're alive in this life and beginning to see things that we never saw before in illumination, the second stage of theosis, because we hold on to things and tell Jesus to go away and leave us alone. And so the message is, not be like the Gadrosines. Not be like those people who focused on what they lost instead of what they gained, but to focus on what our potential gain is in Christ and to open our death grip on things we hold on to and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, denying ourselves and taking up his cross. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>